Hello and welcome to Radio Waves by Todderbert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then please subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. <laughs> yeah, I can see a lot of people going, okay, this is, I'm done with this guy. Click. Next, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm having fun. Sony. Yes, I'm a Sony fanboy. That's what's in front of us. ICF-200W AM FM portable receiver. I picked this radio up for $20 shipped from eBay. Uh, you can find these. They're pretty common. Uh, I spent a little extra because you can get them for like 15 bucks, I think, or even less sometimes. But uh, sometimes they're beat up. They're, this is dented real bad, scratched up real bad on this plastic. So I found a decent example. So I spent a little extra for it. And uh, am I happy? Yeah, it's okay. So we'll go over and we'll talk about it. So let's do dimensions first. Two and three quarter inches wide, five inches high, and a depth of one and a half inches. Yay. All right. Loving the look of the radio for sure. Comparison. We got a CC pocket. CC pocket fits inside the Sony. Okay. And then Iron Man deck of cards. Yep, there you go. And I think for vintage sake, I got a one I haven't reviewed yet. A Jetstream Mini. I've been working on trying to get the scratches out, but it's kind of been a little challenge. And then you've seen this one here, my Magnavox 39. I take this little Magnavox AM radio with me everywhere I go. Gives you an idea of the vintage vibe happening here. So cool. All right, throw it off the side there. Okay, age-wise, uh, guessing, I don't know, it's got the cloth type wrist strap. I'm thinking early 80s, maybe? It's a good guess. So, you guys can correct me. I looked all around real quick and finally in Radio Museum. So, uh, if anybody knows, and sometimes Radio Museum isn't that accurate either. But some of you guys might know because you guys bought it new back in the day. So, all right, so let's go over features. As you saw, it has a wrist strap with that metal swivel. Which is nice. It's like I said, it's a kind of clothy braided style shoelace, whatever you want to call it, wrist strap. Uh, kind of a matte black finish here. You can see how the metal bezel goes around the edge here. And then there's a different color on the back. So you got this like three color scheme going, which is all right. Uh, on the front here, Sony. Yeah, Sony fanboy. I love my Sonys. FM band 88 to 108, AM band 530 to 1600 kilohertz. We got a scale with lines going up. That's a smart idea. If you're going to have your scale at the bottom here, it's neat that they have lines connecting to the top. <laughs> That's smart. Very smart. <laughs> um, there's your aluminum uh, speaker grill where the speaker starts right there, and it's about two inches. Power Plus. I'm thinking this radio maybe handles batteries better. I don't know why it says Power Plus. Uh, was that something different back in the day? You get, if you guys know about that, let me know. I love the sticker on there because... Originality, um, FM AM two band receiver. They did it right. My last, my Sanjin radio, it said two bands receiver, so I think they misprinted it. But Sony got it right. <laughs> ICF two hundred W, sweet. Uh, right hand side, we got the volume. Yay, on off switch. Same textured side there. I like this matte black. It looks good. And the back being gray looks good too. Top, this is interesting. We have the earphone, and then we have the tuning wheel. Very strange position. It's like right in the top. So if you're holding this one-handed, you have to tune it like this. It's very uncomfortable. I don't get it. There's all this room on the side here. Don't know why they wouldn't put a tuning wheel here or move it to the corner. But no, they have it right in the middle here, which is like the hardest thing in the world. Eh, I'm going to get my station. It's pain. So I have to two-hand this one. Yep, it's two-hander. Even though this it's a one-hand form factor, I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, I guess I can do it this way. I don't know. It's tough. But yeah, it's got an orange indicator you can see there. Kind of like a GE look. How it, see how it moves? Yeah. I do like that. That's cool. All right. So we got that. We got the top earphone tuning. Saw that. The back of the radio. We got the antenna. Typical Sony. They've been doing this a long time. Their new radios, do, it's extending past the case. So it feels weird when you're holding it. I don't know. What the heck? I mean, they never figured out how to make a antenna sit flush after all these years. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to gripe, of course. The antenna, 17-inch. And we'll talk about reception and everything else in a little bit. Uh, our band select, FM, AM. I'll put on FM. Vented case. There's some information there. Sony, the model number, two bands. Takes three AA batteries. 
uh, I will open this up for you and show you. Yeah, I'm going to open it, and if batteries go flying, I'll just put them back in. Let's open this up. So there's the inside. And there's nothing on there except for your antenna. FM antenna actually has a little tab, so you can take the whole back off, which is kind of nice. And there's your little ferrite antenna there for the AM. There's where your FM hits. I actually had to sand it. It was all oxidized, so I just sanded it, and it, it might re-oxidize, but I might try to coat it with something. Uh, so yeah, you got your transistors, your inductors. Here's a really neat looking tuning capacitor with a metal plate on it. I haven't seen that too often. It's kind of nice. It's almost like a grounded plate. Maybe it helps with tuning. Here's an IC chip for the audio amplifier, it looks like. I do see some transistors in there. Three AA batteries. And yeah, there's our speaker. So I didn't recap this at all. I just kind of left it all original. Uh, and if it if I have problems with it later, maybe I'll recap it. But I'll be honest with you, I've gotten some old Sony's and I recapped them, and it made no difference on the audio. So Sony's just tend to be quiet, quieter radios for some reason. They don't tend. I don't know if it's in the circuitry, like they built it so it would uh, be a quieter radio. Let me just snap this in here while we're talking. There we go. Uh, so most of my Sony's I pick up are always quiet on the bands, and only my locals or semi-locals come in strong and loud. So I, I think it's the way they built them. Because, uh, like I said, I've replaced tons of capacitors on my Sony's and it does not make a difference. So, and I played around with adjusting and everything else. I just think that's how they were made. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and turn this on and hear what we can hear tonight. Um, let's go to FM. Now, down here, it doesn't get any stations. So, what I'm going to do is hook up my wire. The reason why I'm going to do the wire on this one is because I was upstairs and it was getting a ton of FM stations. So, I kind of want to showcase what it can do. So I'm just going to hook up my little wire in the window, give it a little boost, and see what it can do down here. So, all right, let's turn it on. FM. My cat, my cat loves coming down here. Chase her off my radio table all the time. <laughs> You're less than a minute away from almost a full hour of non-stop music. With me. Kind of hard to tune that big wheel, but it's like gotta go slow. Yeah, play with the volume a lot. Don't know what they're saying. You know that I you. Cool. Sounds good. Let's tune in right. I'm getting a lot of stations with this wire hooked up. That's nice. Shows it's a good FM receiver. Whoa, don't want to break the camera. <laughs> Well, 
this is like tuning like a DSP, pretty nice. It's, there's a lot going on. But if I take off this wire, it becomes dead. <laughs> But if you were outside walking around, you get all these stations, which is awesome. All right, so that's the end of that band. Okay, cool. Uh, let's uh, do some Radio Tatterbird. So let me go ahead and just turn that down for a sec with this wire. Yeah, so Radio Tatterbird. Um, if I remember, I'll put a lay playlist. I know uh, the Radio Geek wanted me to put the playlist on. I got like six or seven songs to keep playing over and over. I guess it's good to keep them the same. I mean, I could change them up if you guys want me to. Let me know. But uh, it's nice having the same so you can kind of compare radio to radio. Um, I kind of want to do that, keep it the same. So we'll go ahead and tune this to 98.1. And let's hear some of my music. Yeah, that's my favorite. Should I make this my new uh, intro? That seems got some output to it. Wow, that sounds good. A little speaker. Classical sounds so good. So yeah, we got a nice uh, nice little audio check there, which is neat. Turn off the transmitter. Turn off the stuff so we don't have any buzzing on the AM band if we go to do that. All right, let me just make sure this MP3 player is off. Okay. So yeah, you know, the FM works pretty well on this. I was pretty surprised, you know, when I was upstairs. When I was down here and I was trying to tune a station in. I was like, uh-oh, I got a dud. And I hate duds. And uh, no, worked out pretty good. So yeah, good thing to do a check. Oh, come on, cat. Magnet for cat hair. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and fire up the AM band. AM, baby. And we're going to hear what we hear. Turn around. I'm just going to, I don't think I'm going to go crazy on DXing tonight. We're just going to go through, find some strong stations, maybe ID them if possible. People, I saw another guy on YouTube with one of these. He said, oh, it's, it's a DX machine monster. Um, no, it's not really. It's about average, from what I've noticed. Right, no more. Stiff neck 
up with your hypoallergenic made in America my pillow with the 10 year warranty plus 60 day money back guarantee. I think it's 540. Especially when you have to slam on the brakes and come to a screeching halt. Let's see what this is. <laughs> Not sure what that is. Maybe six twenty. What you want is the right tire. They donate just as many as they sell. Now that's a company I could get behind, but I can also get behind a product that I've used and that's changed my sleeping. If you go to mypillow.com, the four pack okay. special. So WSM, Nashville, Tennessee, four hundred thirty-four miles, six fifty. Yeah. So it gets. Get to that, so that's not bad. It's a good test. Into the new weeknight, 6 to 10 Eastern on CBS Sports Radio. Local 670. That's where the pointer's at. It's a little bit off. I guess it depends how you look at it. Maybe it's not if you're looking at the back side of it. I was looking at the leading edge. This might be 690. It's so you have to like crank it to hear it. This is actually 700, I believe. Yeah. So WLW Cincinnati, 300 miles. No biggie. Seven twenty. We should have. We should have uh, Toronto. I got it earlier. It sounded good. Getting pretty hard to tune here. Really hard. Well, this is going to be 760, but I did get CFZM. And I have no idea why I'm not getting it right now. Uh, you know, I got to try because this is just a good station. We'll give up. It's Josh Liss. I'm recommending But it does give CFZM. It sounded good. Maybe it was better location, but I had it upstairs going and my wife was like impressed with it. it sounded really good. That was 780. So this sounds like 830 or 840. Okay, that WHAS, Louisville, about 300 miles. You know, it's jumping all over. It's hard to tune. Like, I'm sure it's WCCO there. It's just not a great AMDXer. Good for your locals. 830.
I can't tell where I'm at. They're all pretty much saying the same thing that they believe. Fictitious taxpayer salad. No way. Um, you know. Neuroplace. Well, Bobby sells more Greek beef and marijuana. You can back. And the Nationals were up to three to nothing. But after a first out in the bottom of the sixth inning, the Nationals would have it all fall apart in that inning. It started with a blue double like down the right field line by Chris Taylor, a four-pitch walk to Corey Seager, and then a double down the right field line by Osmani Grandal scored two. Yeah. All of a sudden, it was a three to two ball game tying run at second, and that knocked Hellickson out of the game after five and a third hmm. innings. It brought into the game Sammy Solis, who struck out Cody Bellinger the other night for a huge out. Tonight, That's odd. The outcome would be different. Be clear, 1140. 1-1. So we got a line drive right center field. 1140 is usually Richmond, uh, Virginia, which is usually hard to get. 665 miles. Wow. Okay. So it's a good radio. If you can spend the time on that tuning, you could probably find quite a bit. And I know, like with this radio, I could get, say, a station like this. Just bring out the loop. I'm going to start doing loop sessions here. So for a quiet radio like this, it makes a huge difference with this tuning. I just barely turned the knob. So yeah, we could find some faint stations probably. But I think I'll have more fun during the day with that because at night there's just so much going on. All right. Let's kind of scroll it up here. It is getting a lot of stations. I do have to give it that. earlier it was like completely quiet and nothing you know but that was closer you know daytime I was just getting locals but at least I'm getting some distant stations I know I got 1020 KDKA on here uh, Pittsburgh 450 miles I did get that I know I got CFCM it came in beautiful tonight just different time of night here oh yeah by the way it is um 10 38 p.m. Central Standard Time Chicago Illinois <laughs> a little late for that but I'll add that in there in case you didn't notice the clock on the radio Think. They're designed to give drivers performance behind that. This is like by 15:30 or 15:40, possibly. Nope. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's in the middle there. Yeah. This is by 15:40. I don't have to check. I can tell. K K X E L Iowa. And uh, that's uh, pretty sp like 200 miles away, water level. Not getting these Toronto stations tonight. I don't know why. But... Man, is it hard to tune? It's just this dumb big wheel on top. It's really like difficult. I just want to see where this tops out at. Be good to know. 1630s, possibly. Sixteen sixty, right there. Sixteen sixty. Don't have anything on that. Okay.
Sidney right here. Okay, got 1700. Oh, that's nice. So it's definitely expanded. So it goes up to 1700. So if you're in a market, not bad. Okay, let me go ahead and turn this off. To our final thoughts on the Sony SCF200W. Um, great uh, radio for a collector's piece. I love the look. Um, this is really neat. You know, if I had sit next to my other radios, I don't have a lot of Sony's, so this looks really nice. You know, compared to, you know, Mr. Plastic Dude, you know, Magnavox. I just I like the metal. I'm into the metal, the metal bezel, the metal grill. I think that's neat. You know, looks do sell. I like the blue. I like the white lettering. I like the orange dial indicator. Yeah. Uh, I like the cabinet design. I, I do like this black plastic. Easy to open. Get to the batteries, three AA batteries. Eh, it's okay. FM reception is not bad when you're in a good location or the wire, as you saw. It was awesome on FM. And AM reception, not bad. The only downer on this radio is that tuning wheel. And it's just, it just, I don't know. It's just bad location, I think. Because you really, you have to go real slow. And I'd be here forever trying to tune. But it does do well. It really livens up with a loop, too. Um, when I had that you know, loop out there for a second. But earlier when I had that loop out, it just really... Boom, this thing that came to life. So I think it benefits hugely from a loop if you're into trying to DX with a little portable radio and you want to have a challenge, have a little fun. Buy one of these because they're inexpensive. Like I said, you can find these for under 20 bucks and play with a loop if you got one. The loop costs about $27. And I'm going to do a tuner tips and do a little feature with it. Maybe I'll use this radio since it's kind of like quiet on the airwaves and I can show you, you know, we'll find it. We'll try to find some distant station during the day. And then we'll use a loop, try to pull it in because this works, you know, just shows the difference when you're using a loop with the radio. And this is a good example. So we'll do that and I'll show you that in the future. But yeah, the Sony uh, ICF 200W, pick one up if it looks this good, um, under 20 bucks or 20 bucks, just for the collection's sake. Um, and, you know, for everyday radio, it's okay. Uh, for local stations, local FM, local AM, you'll be happy as can be. The tone quality is really nice. And yeah, you got a little winner there. But if you're trying to DX, you know, and you're trying to go distant stations, Boy, you could do better with an earlier Panasonic, like I've reviewed um, just off the top of my head, that 1070. Uh, wow. I mean, that one that one blew me away. Just uh, how sensitive that was and how easy it was in the AM dial. You don't get FM, though. <laughs> That's the thing. But also, uh, check out the 619 Panasonic. That one I like. That has FM. And I believe the uh, 506 Panasonic RF 506. I got that name number right. Um, the 506 Panasonic. That's also another cool vintage radio that I think was really good on both bands down here with you know without doing a wire to the antenna and all that so yeah those two panasonics 619 and the rf 506 those are good starter points too for a handheld portable that you want if you want to rock out on the am fm bands Alrighty, guys well there it is the sony 200w sweet if you like the video big like big thumbs up uh if you're new subscribe uh, if you love classic vintage radios i buy a lot of them <laughs> kind of addicted don't tell my wife Shh, i'm addicted just a little bit <laughs> just a little bit and uh hit the little bell icon so you know when my videos come out i'm entertaining the idea of doing live stream too i don't know how or what i would talk about on a live stream but uh, i'm thinking about doing that and uh, that'll be something i'll do in the future don't know yet it's kind of tentative i'm just been kind of kicking the idea around and then i'm thinking about branching the channel off if i'm going to do multiple channels or if i'm going to do a single channel because i want to do other products related to kind of radios but not you know kind of per se so i'm trying to figure that out too uh what do you guys think about like if i had a different product i was featuring it on my channel would it totally like throw it off you think i should do a separate channel i, I mean i do a lot of research and a lot of people say just keep it all on one channel and i guess you could just skip that video if you didn't want to watch it so um just ideas i'm kicking around um and then of course comment below about the sony don't want to steal this thunder do you have one of these do you like it do you Wish you had one. You wish you didn't have one. <laughs> you know, just tell me what you think. And if you know what this Power Plus means, let me know. What the heck is that? Does it mean it works? It's like a power saving feature on the batteries? Don't know. All right, you guys, I rambled on long enough. All right, thanks for watching. Take care and goodbye.